My name is Connor Blake. I was abducted in 1957, frozen in stasis for 500 years while everything changed around me. Now, ready or not, I've joined the elite force that defends our worlds, the Frontier Guard. Tonight on Frontier Net, investigative reporter Lieutenant Jennifer Polson gives an inside look at this year's students and professors at Frontier Guard Academy. We join Jennifer now, high above the moon at Copernicus Station. Cadet Blake, isn't it? Son of Dr. Jason Blake? Uh, that's correct. Your father is one of the foremost scientists on the ARC research project. Have you spent much time on the ARC? Um, you know, is this mandatory? You know, are, are all the cadets going to be interviewed? Unfortunately, we don't have the time to speak with everyone. Maybe you should interview another cadet. You know, I'm really kind of boring. Well, do you think your experiences on the ARC have given you a step up at the Academy? I really need to get to class. Your schedule says you're free for the next hour. I like to get to class early. You know, I'm, I'm kind of a teacher's pet. According to your pre-CAD record, you have a history of antisocial behavior, late assignments, disruptive outbursts. Is this academic diligence new since you've entered the academy? Who are you? I'm Lieutenant Paulson, part of the Public Relations Corps. But what my viewers want to know is who are you? You have overcome some heavy obstacles in your record to be accepted into Copernicus. Do you think your father pulled some strings to get you here? Yes, he pulled strings. He pulled my strings in order to get me to study hard, to respect my instructors, and to contribute to the team. Is he happy that you've chosen a military path? rather than following in his scientific footsteps? He's proud of me no matter what I do, okay? Look, I really gotta get to class. And there you have it, Cadet Connor Blake, a future link of the chain that forms the backbone of the Frontier Guard. Card games! <laughs> How exciting. It's not a card game, it's an ancient Terran oracle. I can read your future if you want. Uh, I'll be over here. Pitch. Ugh. Well, come on, what do I do? Okay, well, you're confused about a guy. Yeah, I really like him, but my past relationships have been pretty messed up. Okay, well, let's see. The Six of Swords. Okay, that's your past. And, you know, sometimes the best thing to do in life to solve problems is to just leave it. Your deck of cards is saying I should just kill myself? No, 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 no. No, what I mean is you're confused now about problems that should have been left in the past. I mean, we're at Copernicus. It's a fresh start. The lovers. Ooh, that's your present. Okay, now don't get too excited, because it might not mean that he's your man, but the lovers do represent desire. And they also I represent... have enough trouble keeping up with one relationship. <laughs> and your future. The fool. Yeah, well, ignorance is bliss. Also, too, you could just live in the present and trust your instincts. So, what do I do? Personally, I believe in a higher order of things. Fate? Yeah, I mean, you could call it that. You can't prepare for everything in life. I hope he pings me again. You know, my parents died when I was 12. Oh. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Gladys. Yeah, they were murdered. That's terrible. 
Well, it's like I said, you know, you can't prepare for everything in life. Right, Mr. Otter? Cadet Grib, do you have a minute? Maybe. How long have you been recording? Oh, we just arrived. Ah, that's too bad. If you would have been here a little bit earlier, you could have seen me set my new record in grappling. I pinned both my opponents in under 10 seconds. I've heard you're an accomplished athlete. Grappling, running, diving, rope climbing, the backstroke, breaststroke, I mean the list goes on. I made all Kaitorian by the age of 13, but I thought the guard needs me much more than some sports team. You know what I'm saying? Do you want maybe some, uh, some pictures for a promo? Sure. Great. <clears throat> doing? Is that enough for you? I'm guessing you're confident you'll go the distance and graduate from the academy. The challenge for me isn't graduating per se. It's uh, more about graduating at the very, very top. Anything less would be a shame on the Grib name. And what a reputation that is. What's it like being the son of the legendary Admiral Diadem Grib? It's not what you think it is. To the Grib family, excellence means mediocre. And it may be okay for some of these, <laughs> some of these other cadets to get passing grades, but I'm held to a much higher standard. Isn't that a bit unfair? There are doors opened for me all over the Alliance. I can achieve what's expected of me. And if I fall, I have only myself to blame. Don't you feel like you're living in your father's shadow? <laughs> Admiral Gribb wrote the guidelines on large-scale fleet tactics. He changed the way the Guard operates as a whole. He won the war. I may be in his shadow now, but he'll be able to retire in mine. Yes, I know it's illegal to trade in genuine animal parts from Terra, but you're not on Terra, you're on Mars. Look, your zoo has lots of rabbits, and they breed like rabbits. We must be able to come to some kind of... No, I'm not going to eat it. That's barbaric. I just want to cut off one of its feet. Well, the same to you, lady. <laughs> Which class requires dismembering small animals, Cadet? Lieutenant Paulson, Media and Public Relations. Tell me about the rabbits. Well, not rabbits. Rabbit, singular, specifically afoot. They're supposed to be good luck. I've compiled a list of 97 good luck charms that can be carried or worn without violating uniform code. So far, I've got a line on 30 of them. You got a triumph game going on? Or poker, maybe? No, I don't gamble. Well, that's why I want the good luck charms. I've been assigned to- Polaris, the supposed cursed ship. You're Cadet Tom, correct? Yeah. Of the Cygnus Cluster Toms? Son of Sanivel Tom. Cadet, this could be a rare opportunity for you to speak to the whole Alliance. Now why not take a chance and argue your father's argue case? Argue my father? He was convicted, all right? He's guilty. Sanivel Tom is, was, and will always be a traitor. Have you ever considered changing your name? Under the circumstances- Hey, it's my name too. Tom is my name. If anybody should change his name, it's him. A bit of pride there. So despite being a mixed race, you stand by Katorian customs. I stand for what I stand for. But I won't stand for this. Good luck. Professor Kellogg, thank you for making the time for us. So oh, happy to make time, Lieutenant. As the great philosopher Gantrick said, it is better to make time than to take time. I'll have to remember that. Professor, what exactly do you teach? What do I teach? What do I teach? 
Now, the answer to that is so limited. Now, what don't I teach? Oh, the possibilities are endless. Uh... For example, I don't teach zero-gravity neurosurgery. Why would I? I have had no experience. And I'm absolutely ignorant when it comes to the life cycle of the Antares fretbug. Sir. And the art of wine tasting, completely lost on me. In fact, I probably shouldn't say this, but I know less about more subjects than any other member of the faculty. Professor, I was told there was something specific you wanted to show us. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> there is something I do know about, quite a bit about. It's a skill I acquired when I was stationed at Namimbri Prime. Watch and be amazed. What is it that you're going to show us? Reban Meditation. Professor? <laughs> Professor Kellogg. Okay, this is this is ridiculous. Sure, this is the right time for an interview, Major? Yes. Screening out irrelevancies is a prime skill for command navigators. So what are these cadets learning? This is an advanced exercise, coordinating fleet maneuvers under hostile conditions. Are you sure that is the correct vector for a Reban battle group? So you teach tactics? I teach navigation. Good, very, very good. Okay, just don't get repetitive. And is that what you did during the war, ma'am? Navigation? <laughs> My war record is of little interest. <laughs> Your war record is just plain little, ma'am. It says that you were stationed at Denyu at the beginning of the Panthar campaign, and then there's nothing until Benyon II when you were stationed as administrative support. Uh, uh, excuse me, excuse me. Don't feel sorry for yourself. Fix the problem. I'm sorry, your question was? The planet Denhu, ma'am. There were no non-combatants. Everyone saw action. Why are there no citations in your record? How did you earn your promotion? I'm sorry. I'm afraid we're going to have to do this again after you've fixed your recorder. There is nothing wrong with my... Dr. Trim Warwick, thank you for agreeing to do this interview. I didn't agree to it. I wasn't even informed about it. All members of the faculty got a memo. I'm not a member of the faculty. My duties are limited to medical services and two classes on xenobiology. Even visiting professors have more status. Yes, that's right. You're a contractor from the Chain Corporation. Is it unusual for Copernicus to contract out a position like this? That is not my concern. I started my career in the Guard, before moving to the more lucrative private sector. Returning to service was more a matter of logistics than regulation. The outbreak of the tax virus in the Freeshell colonies, didn't you lead the team to cure the virus? That was a long time ago. The Chain Corporation had the serum ready for distribution in less than three standard months of you being hired. How did your team develop a cure so quickly? Are you getting at something, Lieutenant? Maybe. Certain virologists have suggested Exactly that. how long should we have taken to find a cure for a virus that caused irreversible damages to the nervous system? Hmm? It's always the same with you people. Devise a cure too quickly, and you accuse us of creating the problem in the first place. Wait too long, and you say that we're milking the tragedy for extra funds. 
I didn't mean to suggest. Academy cadets are always finding ways to injure themselves. Or they're passing species-specific diseases with such rapidity that you would think they were bathing nightly in each other's bodily fluids. You can go. I topped the list of physicians in Alliance Space. That is how I got my job. I wonder, though, what did you top to get your job? Commandant Sobel, is this a bad time? Not at all. Come in, come in. Getting a new bust made, sir? Merely having the old one updated, Lieutenant. A little to your left, sir, please. Isn't that a bit conceited? Replacing your bust already? Ever since the bust of Commandant Vitrell was used as a murder weapon, the statues in Commandant's hall have all been soft light holograms. Updating one only requires a few pushes of a button, not chisel and granite. That murder was a direct result of narcotics use, wasn't it? Scorpion cream is a dessert topping to most of the galaxy. Only Rebans find it mind-altering. And only in rare cases does it lead to violence. How have you updated security to prevent a recurrence of that event? As King Agelius said of his soldiers, these are Sparta's walls. King Agelius? A touch to your right, sir, please. History was never your most accurate subject, was it, Jennifer? I didn't think you remembered me, sir. Uh, could you look a little less smug, sir? The cadets have been made aware of Scorpion Cream's destructive potential. I would no more expect them to bring it into Copernicus than I would expect them to smuggle in an Akari Flesh Ripper. Or cheat on their exams. Or distort the facts when they think that would make for a more interesting story. Yes, sir. Understood, sir. Dismissed, Lieutenant. That's perfect. Hold it right there. Hold that look. Today I'm talking to cadets Fetch, Zisser, and Rico Costas. Guys, I understand you grew up together. How has being on Copernicus affected your relationship? Relationship? You said you've been dating for several years now? Well, dude, Fetch, oh. that isn't funny. <sighs> Wishful thinking, I guess. He's always been hopeful. When we were on the wrestling team together, you know, best friends growing up, everybody plays doctor, right? Nothing happened. I was captain of the grappling team. I always dreamed of being a QB in the FSL, but I wasn't fast enough, so I landed in grappling. I was so excited to be accepted into the guard, and having Casper Grib on our ship. <sighs> what do you hope to get out of the academy? Well, I would love to do my part, of course, and, well, this might sound silly, but... Go on. Well, back on Procyon 7, Costas and I used to go boar hunting. Costas was never really good at it. I've always been fascinated with weaponry, and in Zero-G, it's totally different. Well, with the moving targets and free fall, everybody's got to have a hobby, right? Other hobbies? Well, there's music. I, um, I play 52 different instruments. I also love to cook. Wow. I used to blow things up. You know, small ordnance bottle rockets, Fireworks, flamethrowers. I even lit Costas on fire once, accidentally. Pork flambe, anything you can grill. Fire roasted duck. Oh, all synthetic, of course. I don't eat meat. Oh, Tark, yeah. I totally eat anything I kill. Otherwise, it's a waste of life, you know? Fetch is like a brother to me. But the whole hunting and eating meat thing, not that there's anything wrong with that. Normally, I'm kind of a shy guy, but once I get the courage up to talk to somebody, it's Lutrin Falls. I mean, it's like this one time when I was seven, I got stuck in a tree, and Costas totally had to call the local fire squad to get me out. It was really embarrassing. I get embarrassed a lot. I'm not really sure why, but 
<laughs> what are you gonna do? I just shrug it off. <laughs> it's like when I'm using the facilities in the co-species bunk room. Some just smell worse than others. Don't ask me why. <laughs> Biology is not really my strong point. But I just deal with it. At least some of us are gonna get our own quarters in third and fourth year. Thank you, cadet. That was very informative. Good luck to you both. A lot of activity around the gallon bunk room today. Word has it, an inspection is imminent. Oh, tark me. If Stray Tab catches you with a mess like that, you could find yourself on Polaris after all. <sighs> Cadets, we're doing a series on new blood at the Academy. Mind if I ask you a few questions? Maybe at a better time. Wonderful. I notice that you're both mostly human. Any truth to the rumor that Gallant is an exclusive humans only club? Uh, last I checked, our captain was mostly Reven, Lieutenant. <laughs> well, Rendon Fleece is a rather remarkable legend here at the Academy. You have to admit, he is a rare exception. What does it matter? Most of us have got some aunt or uncle or grandfather with some DNA from another planet. Most of us. My grandmother is a quarter Antarian. It just doesn't show. Besides, we're all here for the same reason. Oh, it's hard. You want me to do it, Klutz? <sighs> so, what's this for, anyway? There are curious people all over the Frontier Alliance, and the Guard has always prided itself on transparency. I thought Casper Group was supposed to be on this crew. Now, that's what we thought, too. I guess he really must have screwed up his last semester at Precad. Interesting. If you ask me, he got what he deserved. I notice your captain and chief engineer are conspicuously absent. Well, they're upperclassmen. If they don't say, we don't ask. As it should be, I suppose. Good luck with the inspection. I hate reporters. <laughs> Apparently not enough to stop you from checking her out. <laughs> oh, somebody's jealous. An officer. You don't stand a chance. Well, I think it's more like she doesn't stand a chance against you. Hmm. First intelligent thing you've said all day. <laughs> she left her camera. Is it recording? Do you care? No. <laughs> See if the torsion coppers are out of alignment. Excuse me, cadet. Lieutenant. I'm doing a story on some of the legends that have come through the academy, and your name was on a short list of current ones. For a minute there, I thought you were doing inspections. Not that we would know when inspections were or anything. I noticed back at the gallant bunk room. Is there a place where we can do an interview in private? Oh, I'm sorry, the ready room is being refit. They tell me Tuesday. I'm afraid this will have to do. A cadet, give us the room. You've made quite a name for yourself, Cadet First Class Fleece. May I call you Rendon? Sure. What's this for again? There's a story behind every cadet. I mean, look at your own story. A poor boy growing up on McAllister II, practically drafted into the Guard at age 17, worked your way up, and eventually given a chance to go to officer school. That was four years ago. Now you're captain of the best ship here. Word has it you'll be offered a carrier when you graduate. Yes, that's very colorful, but uh, most of it's not true. <laughs> Nonsense. People want heroes, as long as there's some truth to it. There is some truth, isn't there? Well, of course, there's some truth. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, but uh, my family wasn't poor. Uh, they were average, I guess, and I didn't have the pre-cad scores to get into Copernicus, so I served NCO for the first four years. That's very good, cadet. Scratch last answer. As I was saying, you'll be graduating to a Frontier Guard very different from the one you served in four years ago. A carrier on the front lines, perhaps an exploration mission? Where do you see yourself in a year? Well, this probably sounds silly, but... I wouldn't mind picking up a position here, teaching at the academy. 
I mean, if Major Straytab goes to fleet next year, then the Gallants won't have a flight instructor. Teaching. Scratch last answer. Uh, are you going to be using any of my answers? Probably not. Um, all right. Um, well, when I was stationed in the Capron Cluster, I once was invited to a reception with Admiral Gribb. Admiral Gribb! Excellent! Tell me about that. You're a hard one to track down, Cadet Guthrie. Nice work, uh, sneaking up on me with gravity boots. <laughs> in space, no one can hear you clunking around in these infernal things. You're chief engineer on the gallant and a third year? Fourth year. Of course. Yet you're out here doing... What are you doing exactly? Scheduled maintenance. The grunt work. Isn't that normally reserved for first years? Maybe I like being alone. Or does it have something to do with the inspection today? What inspection? <laughs> Funny how everybody seems to know when the inspections are going to happen, except the people most likely to know about them. The ship's captain and chief engineer. Really, Mr. Guthrie. Inspections are a pain in the ass. Better answer. You mind if I go off the record? I don't remember consenting to be on the record. I noticed a narcotics reprimand on your permanent record. Orion M. Potent stuff. Usually that's a career killer. No chance of becoming an officer. Yet, here you are, with one of the most sought-after assignments at the Academy. What's the story there? Between you and me, of course. I do my job better than most. Anything else is my business. Ma'am. That's too bad. You don't give a talk about anything, do you? I give a talk about keeping my ship in tip-top shape. I don't mean about your job. Your performance record is not at issue. Though some could argue your personal one... Well, word is... You're the man to see for a line on just about anything. I think you have me confused with someone else. Is it because I'm an officer? Would it change anything if I was out of uniform? I'll be here all week. If you change your mind, you know where to find me. Lieutenant. Sometimes inspections turn up things. Things better left in a safe place. Admiral, you are the hero of the last Akari War. Your holding of the Capron Cluster was a key factor in ending that war. What was that like, sir? Um, it was hell. The Ikari had us pinned. We had no hope of reinforcements. The cluster is our primary source of Ilarium 115. And we had to hold on to it for the guard. I mean, without Ilarium, there's no spin drives, no hope. The name Grib is revered across the Frontier Alliance. Schools, ships, war memorials, all named after you. When you joined the guard, did you have any idea that someday you'd command the fleet? I've always held a deep sense of my own personal destiny. But having said that, the one thing the Guard teaches you is to always reach for the stars, both personally and professionally. And one of the first things you learn in the Guard is that your duty is whatever the Guard asks of you, be that fighting in the trenches or ordering good men and women to do the fighting for you. Bridget Admiral Grip, we are ready for spin-up, sir. Acknowledged. Set course for the Capron Cluster. I'll be right there. Well, Lieutenant, we're about to get underway. Unless you want to spend a long time in the Capron Cluster. Uh, you know, every time we go there, we scan those blue clouds in Akari space. And they're always there, probing our defenses, planning for the next time. It's an ominous sight. You believe another war is imminent? The Ikari have always refused peace. You take that away and all that's left is war. 
That's why we can never relax our vigilance or this enterprise. We show the flag, remind those bastards of the licking we gave them last time. Hopefully that's enough. Rear Admiral Silas Lorton, commander of the ARC station and uh, administrator of the ARC research project. Thank you, sir. Will we be taking a tour while we... The, the tour is off. Sir. There's nothing I can show you at this time, but I can talk about some of it. We've managed to excavate about 25% of the surface hull, and both of the massive drive rings are now completely exposed. We've uncovered a handful of doors that lead to a dozen or so chambers that we've discovered over the years. But 98% of the Ark is, is still a mystery to us. Some believe the Ark is intelligent. Do you think it could be testing us? Sometimes, Lieutenant, a ship is just a ship. The ancestors were brilliant, but they weren't gods. The Ark does use DNA as part of its security measures, but there's no sign that it operates on a more intelligent level than that. The fact that it even remembers our DNA after several millennia is impressive, but it's nothing that our own computers couldn't do without breaking a sweat. Would these be pre-awakening computers or technology based on what's gleaned from the Ark? <clears throat> uh, next question. Admiral Gribb paid you a visit recently. I understand you served under him in the last Akari War. What was that like, serving with someone of his distinction? Admiral Gribb. The man is quite the leader, isn't he? Single-handedly stood off a thousand Akari warships, rescued a planet full of miners and their equipment, several medals of honor. The Admiral's a good man, and he serves the Guard well. But there are many good men and women in the Guard. Each of us plays our own part. Lieutenant. But Admiral Gribb must have... Lieutenant, I've had a really long day. I'm due on the Ark tomorrow at 0500. If there's nothing else? No, sir. Thank you, sir. This is Lieutenant Jennifer Paulson reporting from the Ark. This area is totally restricted, but the people have a right to know what's going on here. Even though I've sworn an oath to the Guard, we can no longer trust them that they will tell us what's been found here. And what's been found, our very survival might hinge on it. I told you the tour was out. Admiral Lorton, I must have taken a wrong turn back at the Ark Station. So did your transport. I need to confiscate all of your footage. Really, Admiral? I, I haven't even seen anything yet. You can at least let me take a look at the good stuff first. And I'll need the name of the civilian scientist who got you aboard. So sure one of your military types wasn't involved? Absolutely. You stole Dr. Ballard's ident. She already has an alibi. This would be a lot easier if you would just give me a quick tour. You know I can't do that. There's a reason why this is a maximum security facility. Oh, come on, Admiral. Cut the bullshit. Connor Blake was here recently, and the rumor is, so was an Akari. What happened? It's an interesting rumor. That's all it is. And now Admiral Grid has taken Enterprise and Polaris out into deep space? Odd pairing, don't you think? The Admiral does not consult me on fleet deployments. And the Capron Cluster. Without Admiral Grid, Who's keeping the Akari and the Rippers at bay? I told you before, the Guard has many capable leaders. And the Enterprise is not our only command carrier. As for the Capron Cluster, that's not an active battlefront. It's a standoff, at best. I could have had a lucrative job reporting for the Chain News Service, Admiral. But I went with public broadcasting, because the Frontier Net reporters are free to dig as deep as they want. No censorship. Save the sob story. We have perfectly legitimate reasons for protecting what is and is not here. Name one. You know what I think? I think you're looking for a huge story. I think that if you find it, you think that CNS will be all over you, that you'll be an instant celebrity. Look 
for your story elsewhere. Your transport awaits. Security to entry level two. Intruder alert. Admiral, we have a crewman knocked out on Ark Station. Looks like Paulson's on her own. Understood, Ark Station. Security is closing in on her. I should be back before dessert, Doctor. If I could use weapons aboard the Ark, I'd have shot her already. We're running a trace on her security spoof now. Being a chain employee makes me an obvious target. Since my access was already tied into the chain database, it might have been possible for someone at CNS to copy my data to Paulson's profile. Giving her identical access. I warned them about a security breach of this nature. We need to close that hole. Now. I'll do what I can. Morton out. Morton to Paulson. Don't do this. And miss the greatest story of all time? People already suspect something's going on. Triangulate on her position. She's activated signal scattering. If she gets too deep into the arc... Is there a possibility she could reach the revelation chamber? Not a chance. I don't even have clearance. We've underestimated her before. I don't want to do that again. Should we drum down the guard for this? Damn! Dead end. What we need is a map. Something strange here. Hey! Ugh, ancient piece of junk! Admiral, we're reading a decompression protocol in progress. Two levels down from you. Section 12. Do we have anyone there? No. Paulson? Possibly. I thought she wanted in, not out. I'm on my way. <laughs> Shit! Get me out of here! Lieutenant, can you hear me? Yes, help me get out! We're working on it. Look for an override. Well, I don't read Arc Builder. What, what am I looking for? Something big and red, maybe? The Arc reconfigures its panels for its own purposes. The, the screen's gone blank. Allard, shut down all the airlock controls. Arc system interface is not responding. We'll have to do it manually from the Arc. There's not enough time. <laughs> Admiral, what happened? I guess the Ark didn't like her either. <laughs>